this is Ryan Hoyme, aka Massage Nerd, and today we have the president of the FSMTB, Kevin Snedden. Correct. Yeah, got it right. You got it right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, welcome. Thanks. Hey, yep. So, um, what got you involved in the Federation? Well, I uh, have been a massage therapist since dinosaur times, Ryan. Okay. <laughs> and, uh, Twenty plus years as a massage therapist, and. I'm one of those people that wanted to give back to the profession. I have a true passion and love for what it is that I do. And it started uh, about 11 years ago. I was um, selected uh, to serve on my state board, the Missouri State Board of Massage Therapy by Governor Mel Carnahan. And um, the federation was founded about six years ago. So my board asked that I attend a meeting uh, in Albuquerque to find more about uh, the possibility of this organization for me. And I attended that meeting and not only believed in the cause of creating the Federation of State Massage Therapy Boards, um, but was fortunate, fortunate enough to actually get elected to the initial board of directors. Okay, cool. So was the, um, so basic from, from the get-go, you were on board of directors then for the Federation then? Or I was. Uh, the, the purpose of that initial meeting was for state boards to come together and talk about creating an organization and what would its purpose be. And it's a matter of, as any massage therapist knows, anyone that's practiced for any period of time, we're a patchwork of rules and regulations. We still have a few states that don't regulate the profession even. And so I live on one of them, so Minnesota. So right. Yeah. <laughs> so it was a matter of a clearinghouse, an organization that these member boards could come together and share best practices. Uh, another thought was there wasn't a licensure exam that had been created specifically or exclusively for the purpose of measuring entry-level competencies for someone entering the field. Okay. There was an exam being used um, and it was the only thing that was out there and it was a good thing that we had it, mm -hmm. but one of our biggest projects and our initial focus once the Federation was founded was the development of the MBLEX, the Massage and Body Work Licensure Exam. The states have direct uh, insight and oversight of that tool. As we say, the states own that exam. And have you had to go into states personally and talk to them about um, adopting it then too then? Or do you have somebody else do those kind of things? Uh -huh. or? A little bit of both. Um, you know, we, we started a mere six years ago. So initially, other than uh, an interim board uh, executive director and the board members, were all volunteers. So we all served on state boards. Okay. We were all licensed massage therapists, um, but they were non-paid positions. So the first thing was, beginning to build the infrastructure. You know, you need some initial policies and procedures and those types of things in place um, to get the ball rolling a little bit. So as we grew, it was. Um, just because a, a state uh, organization might have been, or a regulatory body might have been a member board, didn't mean that they were using the exam yet. So we had to go in and explain how was the, the exam developed? What were the steps that went into that? Because the state needed the comfort of knowing that this is a psychometrically valid tool that can be used. It's something that they can stand by. They can have comfort, comfort and confidence in knowing that this tool is going to measure what they need before issuing someone a, a license to practice. And when they fill out the paperwork, how long does it usually take to get a response in order to take it then? Well, the, the exam itself is um, it's one tool that states use, right? So using my state of Missouri as an example, we're going to do a background check on that individual. We're going to review their, um, their credentials, their transcripts. Do they go to an accredited school that we recognize? So the MBLEX is only one component of that. A student can go on our website, fsmtb.org. They can apply to sit for the exam and ultimately be approved and ready to sit in three to five days. That's it. That's it. Okay. It's that simple. <laughs> and depending upon on how prepared that student is, they'll get an email back letting them know that they can go ahead and set up their test time. They log on the Pearson View website. We have had situations, and, and we can't take credit for it, but it excites us to be able to share. We've had students that have applied for the exam, been approved to set for it, gone within the same week to 10 days, got their results back, and truly been licensed in three weeks or less. Now, a lot of that you have to give credit to the state boards, though. They're the ones that are then reviewing the scores. They've had to look at the transcripts, the background checks, everything else that goes behind it. But we have a, a pretty seamless and flawless pro process in place that allows people to get through it pretty easily. And is your term up soon then? 
It is. I've been with the Federation for six years, and I've been very fortunate to be the president for the last three years. Okay. And uh, at October, at our annual meeting, we'll hold our next election. We have four officers, or four positions that will be open. We elect our officers every year, so we'll also have a new president, vice president, and treasurer. Uh, but I left my state board in December of last year after 10 years and 10 months. Well, and I will be leaving the Federation as president and leaving the board of directors in October. I'll be the immediate past president next year, so I'll still be involved. And okay. back to my love of our profession and, and um, passion for the industry, you know, I'm still going to be involved. You know, I'm sure I'll be on some committees and, and still try to be active and making sure that we're moving things in the right direction. Are you full-time therapist still there? Uh, I do spa consulting, and I manage a spa for uh, Argosy Casino Hotel and Spa in the Kansas City area. Massage therapy is, is not, I can't even really call it a part-time at this point. I specialize in pediatric orthopedics, okay. and I have an orthopedic pediatric surgeon that refers clients to me. So I work on the, the little ones, and I teach the caregivers, mom, dad, grandma, grandpa, techniques specific to whatever pathology that, that they may be working on. Torticollis, for example, okay. huge yeah. in yeah. newborns. Yeah. Um, showing the parents and the caregivers some basic techniques that they can then do daily, several times a day, in hopes of getting that child in, into a place much quicker. Okay. And then where do you see the Federation going to in the future? What kind of goals? And well, you know, we, the Board of Directors, we recently had, uh, we revisited our strategic plan. Um, we talk about, our tagline is supporting our member boards in their mission of public protection. I once I was on a panel and someone said, you know, uh, they look upon regulators as, as bad people. Mm -hmm. And if you're a legitimate therapist and you're doing good work, you're not the one we're concerned about. It's the person that is practicing without a license or that's involved in, be it the sex trade or human trafficking, trying to pose as a massage therapist. They're the people that we want out of our profession. We just want a level playing field for those people that are in it. So in moving forward, I see the Federation continue to serve those member boards, um, providing services, uh, the MBLEX, for example. Um, we are working on a disciplinary database because right now someone may do something and lose their license in one state, and within days they're crossing the state line and applying for licensure in another state. And yeah. sometimes, unfortunately, they get away with that. So having a clearinghouse of information that we can track those people a little bit better um, diploma mills. There are schools out there that are not legitimate programs. Being sure that we've identified them. Our state mem our member boards, our state boards have asked that we look into continuing education. And, and so, yeah, I saw that recently. Yeah, so yeah. looking into not only the program material, but also the individual offering the class. There's some great instructors out there. And again, there's, those aren't the ones we're worried about. It's the fly-by-night type people that are popping up and offering programs that they're either not qualified to provide or it's subject matter outside the scope of practice for a therapist that they couldn't legally provide in their state anyway. And then, is it Puerto Rico also you're into? Puerto Rico and uh, the Virgin Islands are both yeah. U.S. territories and they are member boards in our and don't you have to have it in a different language than two? We did. We uh, to meet their requirements, and the Puerto Rican, uh, the board down there, the Department of Health, were instrumental in helping us translate the exam. That was so it is available yeah. in Spanish as well. Yeah. 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 <laughs> so, um, any other things that are in the future then for FSMTV then? You know, those are the big UXs. Okay. CE program, um, the database are the two biggies. We have a practice exam, an online practice test. There are several of them out there, and I'm not going to knock anybody. I'm just going to say we're not affiliated with them. And so the questions that you see, the subject matter may be on our exams, yeah. but how the question is written or the quality of that question, that's not our product at this point. And unfortunately, we hear that in our home office. We'll get that phone call saying, I want my money back. For what? Well, I took your practice test, and it was a money back guarantee. Oh, that wasn't yeah. our practice test, unfortunately, so we don't owe you that money. Yeah. You might need to go back to that website and visit it. But we've been working on uh, an online practice exam and a study guide, and although we had hoped to have these things done uh, several months back, and we're, we really are doing everything we can to get them done in a timely fashion, ultimately it's no different than the MBLEX exam itself. 
Okay. Quality is our big deal. And if it's not the best product that we can put out there, we're going to postpone it a little bit and not put it out quite yet. So, you know, we're shooting for the end of the year. Uh, people have heard me say it before and I'm saying it again. But once it is done, it will be the best that we can. It'll have that Federation stamp of approval. On it. <laughs> is there any places out there that you recommend at all? Or in the future, do you think you'll recommend certain places to take a practice test or anything? Or? Sure, in the future, we'll recommend our practice okay. exam, <laughs> our study guide. You know, right now, more than anything, um, go to our website and check out the outline of subject matter. You know, the topics that are there. There's a bibliography available that references the textbooks that we're drawing the information from to write these questions. That's the best source of information. If you've gone to a good program, have comfort in knowing that our exam is measuring entry-level competencies. So if you've got the basics down, our focus as regulators is, can you safely work on the general public and do no harm? We're not measuring advanced modalities. We don't care about advanced techniques. Can you safely work on the general public? That's, that's the basis that, that we build upon. National certification and advanced certifications, there's a need for them in our profession. Uh, there's a, the profession is asking for them, but those advanced, comp advanced competencies shouldn't be a part of the licensure purpose. How, how many states roughly do you, are you guys in right now? Oh, man, you got me on that one. Yeah. It does. It yeah. changes quite a bit. It's 38-ish, yeah. I'm going to say. Yeah. So hopefully my executive director isn't watching because she'll be cringing. <laughs> um, the, the 36, it 38 states, so yeah. it does. Yeah. And, and you know, we got some information yesterday that I won't share quite yet, but there are two more states that are about to come online within the next few weeks that will also be utilizing the exam. Okay, cool. <laughs> Well, I definitely wish you the best of luck, and I hope you stay in the profession one way or another, and I hope you, we see you at the trade shows and everything. Else. Likewise. Yeah, yeah, ditto. Thanks so much for having me in today. Um, obviously, I don't have to give you a plug, because they already know about you if they're watching this. But likewise, thank you for all thank you, you yeah, do for the profession as well. Yeah. And, your, and one side note is, what kind of hobby do you have? Uh, I spin fire a little bit, and I'm a licensed pyrotechnician, that so my wife's cool. one yeah, I saw you last year do that, so it was just amazing. So. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Cheers.